Hi, my name's uh, Darren Bowden. I'm the CEO of Metals Exploration. We're a London uh, AIM listed company and we have uh, gold operations in the Philippines. Um, the company's doing really well at the moment and uh, after four years of being at the helm, um, we've uh, turned the company around to run very well. Very well. We're about to find out how well in a second. But <laughs> first of all, like, we've known Matter spoken before today, so I'd love to get to know you. So tell me a bit about your background. What have you done that's relevant to what you're doing now? Um, I have 25 years in the mining industry. I uh, started in coal, uh, moved to base metals in, uh, in Papua New Guinea. I've been in now more than 15 countries working across uh, uh, North and South America. Uh, base metals, precious metals, copper, gold. Um, I'm very, I, I like the change management uh, aspect of mining, where you come in, you see something that needs to be fixed. Um, I like greenfields and brownfields work because you're, you're always moving, you're always growing a business. Um, I did that with Glencore, I did with Nearstar. Um, I worked with Mubadla as a startup uh, gold operation in uh, Colombia as well. So done a, a lot of that in my career and um, I saw the opportunity in, in Metals X when uh, you know they're basically they were at a bank, stage of bankruptcy. It was, well, can we turn this around? Can we make it work? And I took the helm and said, yeah, I think I can. And uh, four years, four to five years later now, wow, it's, it, like, the time flies. Yeah, yeah it's going really well. A lot's happened, and we'll talk about specifics in a second. So change management, in other words, yeah. for turnaround. Yeah. Uh, things, when you walked into the asset, not so good, mm -hmm. as they are now, a bit yeah. polite, previous management. Um, so why, how did you come in? How were you introduced to the project? Yeah, it's interesting. The major shareholder, uh, Nick Candy, uh, had uh, just That's taken... Property, Nick Candy. He's a property man, a okay, uh, okay. property guy. Yeah. Um, but him and his brother uh, had bought into this asset. He ended up with the asset. And um, he himself went and visited. And I wasn't there at the time. And he went and visited with uh, Hannum Partners. And he came come back and he said, we need something different. Something's not working here. So he himself got a good feel for that. And Hannum Partners said, oh, we know somebody. <laughs> so I was in Colombia at the time. Um, actually uh, looking at uh, small scale gold operations and um, they called me and they said, can you come and have a look at this for us? And I went over there for two or three days and then I went to London and I saw Nick and um, I said to Nick, I said, well, you're in trouble. And he said, why? I said, well, you're going broke and um, I'll wait till you go broke and then I'll buy it because I'm pretty sure I can turn this thing around. He said, no, you've got to come and work for me. Yeah. So I had a little bit of a jousting session. And it was great because um, he's a fantastic guy to work for. Um, I really, you know, um, I'm deadly loyal to the company, to him. And yeah, we've done a great job. So okay. it's, it's turned around from there. So, so I started uh, two months later. Okay, so what was, what was the state of affairs back then? Because you, you're dealing with um, a, a gold project, which is sort of lower, on the lower side of the grade, like 1.2, 1, 1, 1. 1.4, the sort of thing. You've got to be really efficient, right? You do. So what did you in inherent inherent uh, when you walked in? Well, Look, give me some numbers. Uh, oh, wow. Um, they were barely breaking 50% recovery. Um, they were at the highest grade of the mine. They were up around the 1.8 grams. The first okay. four years right. all ran around that 1.8 grams. And then the, as we get further into the ore body, it drops off. Um, they had technology issues around the process plant. They have no uh, had not been able to invest their own IP to figure out how it worked or what where they were failing. Mm -hmm. Their their systems of management of information just weren't there. So the 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 managers on the ground weren't able to tell themselves where they were wrong. That was a big start. We started with putting the proper information systems so we knew where we were failing. Um, I can give you an example of that. The mine itself was based off a whittle shell. So they'd not even done a design. It was just a, they were digging a hole without, and, and this was a mine that's supposed to progressively move forward. So there yeah. need to be ramp systems. There need to be an understanding of how the material come in to backfill because it's not a standard open pit. So we uh, saw all that. We said, wow, there are so many things we can do better here. Um, my metallurgist who, who comes with me wherever I go, uh, he's probably one of the top five in the world. He has a PhD. He actually reviews PhD papers for the University of Queensland. Um, when him walked in, we took about four weeks to study the information. We said, well, they keep thinking they're failing in the second half of the circuit, but they're actually losing all the gold before it even gets to the second half of the circuit. We turned that around. It took us a little while to figure out what was wrong with the flotation circuit. And I, I spent time in the lab with him because I, I enjoy that stuff. So him and I spent time in the lab together. He said, Darren, it floats, but we can't get it to float in the plant. 
And what was happening, um, just a bit of technical uh, work, uh, simply the, uh, the non-sulfide gange, which is basically the rock, was activating before the sulfide where the gold is. Mm. And what we did in the plant, we said, well, we can't replicate this in the lab. We took the plant, made it a chemistry set, and for three weeks, we started changing pH. And we went from a five pH right the way through an eight to eight and a half. And at eight and a half pH, it went from a brown sludge to a perfectly crystal clear pyrite flow. And that was it. So we went from, in that circuit, we went from, you know, 55 to 58% recovery to right now we're at 92. Oh, you're uh, 92, okay. At that, in that circuit. And then the second half of the circuit, the biox circuit, um, they couldn't keep the temperatures down. They couldn't get the bugs to work. Right, right. And that second half of the circuit, we're now running at over 94% recovery. Total recovery right now is about 89% versus a 50 start. So we had numerous circuits we had to work on. Start with a low hanging fruit and then you work your way through. And it's taken us four years, especially in biox, to understand the IP and understand how it works. We know it. We could actually do this anywhere in the world now because we know it so well. And, and did that kind of revelation happen fairly early on? In terms of the recovery rates, because I saw, I think I saw something in some of the marketing which was talking about eighty percent average. Yeah, uh, so we're well beyond that now. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. We're well beyond that. So that was like it did. It it was a growth story even through that recovery. But by the end of um, uh, twenty nineteen, we we're over seventy percent. Mm. End of twenty twenty, we we're up again, and now we're around the eighty nine percent. Okay, so you're 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 up towards the high because obviously eighty is at the lower end of where we want to be. Want to exactly. Be, for sure. Yeah. Okay. In, interesting. So, you, and can you give me how many ounces were they producing when you walked in? Uh, Forty-eight thousand in two thousand and eighteen, and we did eighty-five last year. So getting towards the doubling ish yes. within that frame, and um, and that's from. Tell me about the asset that you're, you're extracting. Mm, so it's a, a between a uh, depending on where we are in the ore body, um, that's between 1.2 and 1.4 grams now. Yeah. I said it started off closer to two. Um, as we go forward, that goes down. I think the uh, the total average over the rest of the life of mine is about 1.29. We've only got four years left. Okay. Um, the spun off uh, 75, uh, 73 million cash flow, uh, free cash last year. Probably do 60 to 70 this year, depending on gold price. Um, because the, while our recovery is going up, the head grade is marginally coming down. So yep. the ounces we're looking at this year are about 75 to 80 on a higher recovery rate. So right. we're getting the recovery up, we're maintaining our cost structure. Our oil sustaining is actually still going down. Um, the, the business is so. Let's down. look at how you have kind of deploy that that yeah. revenue because you, there's a few things going on. You're you're paying down d debt at a rate of knots. Yep. So let's talk about that. So um, when we first took over, there was about 130 million of debt on the company. They were just asking the uh, two major shareholders for more money um, to just keep funding the business. Yeah. That already funded something around $40 million into the business. And really the business would never have existed if they didn't do that. Mm. Um, so it was necessary, but it was extremely high debt. You know, we're talking 20% tickets. It wasn't mm. good debt for the company. So that was MES debt. And then they had a senior facility um, that started at about 65, 67 million. And they were really just paying the interest off on that. Okay, so and they'll be paid off by so they'll be paid off by first uh, April this year. Okay. So from 2020, when we first refinanced the whole debt, from then till now, we paid 160 million off the debt, and we've got about 15 left to go. Okay, so I mean, I've never worried about having a little bit of debt on, on the balance sheet, but it, you obviously want to get that out of the way, given the history, just to make up a statement, I, I suspect. It, it, no, it's more the fact that it's actually not a bad ticket. It's more the fact that under the covenants, any spare cash we have has to go to the loan. Okay. So we have to pay it off. Okay. okay. So there is a requirement under the loan. We got benefits for that because if we couldn't pay it, we didn't have to. But yeah. once we had spare cash, we have to. So right now we'll drive that down, pay it off, and then that cash can go into a war chest. Okay. Let's look at the next aspect of how you spend your money, which is, uh, you talked about four-year life of mine. Yeah. So one, new assets, and uh, whether that's organic or whether you're you know, paying cold hard cash for that. Right? Yeah. How are you approaching that? We look. We we've got a real mandate from the shareholders, and this isn't just the two majors. This is the minor shareholders. They don't want to see dilution right now, so that cash really has to go into structured growth, and um, as you say, organic in this case. So we're looking. Um, I've got a fantastic team in country. We've got the experience. We know the rela uh, the regulatory authorities. We have relationships. I live there to make that work. 
So our first and foremost is to find something that makes sense within the Philippines, which we could redeploy the infrastructure we have somewhere there. Um, and that's where we're focused. So recently we just took out a, a small, small company called YMC. Um, it has a Greenfields, what we call it Greenfields, there's five major targets which have been developed or, or known over the historic history of the, um, the exploration that's been done in that area. Um, and we're going to start proving those up as quick as possible. So at least one could be brought online with the existing infrastructure. And the benefit of that, we can move it quickly, it's in country, um, and the capital cost will be reduced by doing so. Okay, so that, that overlap is, is, is critical. So in terms exactly. of how quickly you think you can bring that online, what, what, what are you thinking? Look, we're, we're hoping that by the time we have Run Runo run down, we're looking at 12 months out from that. We'd already done some of the civil infrastructure ready okay. to go. So maybe a 12 month hiatus. We are looking at a second um, smaller business um, which fits into a model I ran in Colombia and work I've done previously, and that's working with local small-scale miners. Right. These guys are mining crazy grades, you yes. know, and it, what you need to do is give them technology and functionality so they can mine it at a higher rate, right. and you take a, a, a profit are we, are out of it. What are they, tolling, or you buy it, the ore off of them? Or how does it work? A bit of both. So right, we okay. work with them, and the structured uh, the structure I'm looking at is they have to form cooperatives under the government regulations. They can't be corporations. Those cooperatives basically work together to produce ore to go a single process plant. Yeah. Um, we have um, uh, some of those cooperatives' productions is ours, some is theirs. The tolling situation is for them, and the other ore is for us. We're talking grades in excess of an ounce a ton. Okay. So even at 200 to 300 tons a day, you're still spinning off as much or nearly as much um, uh, many ounces as we are right now um, at a lot lower cost. So your cash flow could still be just as good. Okay. That we can do within two years. We know where those all bodies are. They're already mining them. Right. And we will start, uh, we're already starting to map them. We'll do some drilling on them. You're talking about a ticket of, you know, 15 to $20 million easily comes out of our cash flow and then starts generating cash before the bigger project, mm. which will come, you know, caught five years from now. Right. And, and, and tell me about the Philippines, because I, I, mm. we have tried to do business there. It, 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 you, you need to be very local you, in all you, space, right? So I, 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 I would love you to tell me a bit more about it. So things like... End of end, end of mine remediation rest, yep. restoration whatever whatever you phrase you want to throw at it. There's tell me about that and the, and the costs associated with that and any other kind of implications. Very good. Um, it's very similar to anywhere else in the world. The benefit of the type of project that we have and the way we've implemented design is all of that rehab we're doing is actually being done as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the tailing stem, which everybody has a massive problem with, our tailing stem is actually built as a subaqueous tail. So it's right. actually a dam, not a tailing stem. Okay, okay. So it is a build and walk away. You don't have to touch it once we finalize the mine because the dam itself is set up for maximum probable flood and uh, will be there forever as a dam, not a tailings dam. So the majority of the costs are already sunk. We're looking at probably a $5 million ticket to finish off the rehab once we finish mine closure and then a small ongoing cost to manage the, uh, okay. the emission control. And you can't run right, that's, that's more than it's manageable nothing. for yeah. sure. Um, so, and then tell me, about, coming back to the kind of, um, the working with locals and the, yeah. so what's the phrase you use for them? What was the local name for miners? Uh, it's a it's small scale miners. Yeah, but, but what, is uh, there a local name for that? Uh, well, they're called, uh, it's um, uh, Minam Bahe. So okay. it's some uh, small mines. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So you, working with those guys and then using your existing infrastructure to kind of with for throughput, how how long can that run? Because I'm thinking, obviously, you've got some infrastructure. Do you need to move that? Do you need to? So yeah, our existing infrastructure wouldn't work for that. Right. What we'd be looking at is a small 300 ton a day plant, okay. Okay. which you can buy off the shelf out of China. Okay. You know, they're right now uh, they're probably just to buy the plant itself is two to three million. Right. I'm saying 10 million to get it on the ground running, 
um, including uh, the tailings infrastructure. We would actually do a filtered tail so we could show them what good looks like in terms of tail, tailing storage. And that will help us with the larger plant later for permitting. Right. Um, yeah, and that's what we would do. Do you have a current pl processing plant? Yes, we do. Right. It what does about two and a half million a year. So it's, it's huge. It's 7,000 a day versus 300 a day. De deconstruct that and we do right so we we food. target that into one of the larger projects now we in the new area like i said there's an epithermal gold which is small scale mining and there's two other one is a copper gold um ore body we'll start working on soon and the other is a copper ore body both are flotation plants and we've got a uh, a grinding and flotation circuit in the existing plant so it's just repurposing it Right. Okay. So four years out, and sometimes four years becomes five years, depending on what's Where, going on. How it on. goes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Um, with the and then the other other kind of use of of, of capital is clearly you know, pure play exploration. So in terms of current location, are we are you done on exploration? Is there any Look, extension possible? For it's there is, but it's small. We're right, not okay. talking years. We're talking months. We've done a, we've done a lot of exploration over right. the last two uh, years, and yeah. there's not much in so terms of extension. Up. So with, with the new asset, you've, yes. you've obviously they've done a lot of work. Yep. you've got to do a lot of work. Yes. Um, how much of that work is expansion in terms of exploration of of the asset itself? So the new area is uh, about 16,000 extra hectares. It's 20 kilometer strike. Right. And, uh, as I said, there's already five targets defined. We'll work on those specific targets. Okay. And we're working on two at the moment. Like I said, my goal is to have cash at all times. So that small scale mining is a very uh, high priority for us yeah. to get a small plant in and keep cash coming in. And even if it's enough cash just to run the expiration and keep yeah. things ticking over, keep the management team funded, great. We don't want to go back to the market. You talked about hiatus of, of 12 months and obviously the, 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 the gap can be partially filled by and this, th this exactly. right? Um, in terms of also your costs will presumably come, come down, come a, down yeah. a bit, apart from some, you know, I don't know, oh, OPEX around relocation of the of the of the plant, etc. But those are one-off exceptional costs. Correct. Um, is are there, are there any other things that you're looking at in terms of you know mi minimizing the 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 I guess the margin loss of margin during that 12 month hiatus period? Um, yeah. Look, we we are. Um, it, it's not uh, it, our M&A process is not finished. There's a lot of other things in the Philippines we're looking at. We are mate, remaining Philippine centric. If we can find another asset that fits within our cash flow yeah. that generates cash yeah. already, we will definitely be okay. looking at that. Not a lot of competition, I suspect. That's a great thing. You know, we when we took this place over, um, it as I said, it didn't have the best reputation. Yeah. We've won the President's Award two years running. We were nominated by the Philippines for the ASEAN Awards in both mineral processing and mining. We have the best reputation in country. We go to these communities, we put them on the bus, and we take them to our mine. Yeah. And they all say, we want you to come and work with us. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we have, we're the bell of the ball. We have the opportunity to grow the Philippines mining industry like nobody else. Mm. I live there for this reason. We build relationships in the Philippines for this reason. We have the opportunity to do so. And it is probably one of the most underdeveloped highly uh, prospective regions within the ASEAN region. And yeah. that's purely and simply because of its history. Yeah. You know, the, the history of the MPA, the history of government uh, moratoriums over mining, there's a whole range of reasons. Yeah. All of those things have gone away. It's now stable, especially in Luzon, where we are, the main island. Um, the government's lifted all moratoriums against mining, so they are very yeah. focused on bringing mining back into the country. And we have the respect of the communities to do so. It's, well, I was quite impressed with your... Um, I'm going to use ESG here. Sorry, <laughs> the Please ESG say. phrase. Uh, yeah, I'm very impressed by the, your, your social license. That's the yes. better match. I, I like, like that word better. You yeah. know, where you have not, you've earned the right. It seems, um, judging by your, your marketing material, presentation, etc., to do business with the full endorsement and backing of the local community and whichever country you're talking about. Now, this isn't a Philippines thing that we're, you know, Asia and broad. It's anywhere thing. You've done a good job there. You must. Did you spot that quite early on, or was it? Yeah. Look, I, it, it's part of my DNA too. Uh, Colombia, classic yeah. example. If you yeah. don't integrate into the community and provide them with the benefit and the foresight of where you are taking them, then they will reject you. They will move against you. Um, when we took over, there was a little bit of uh, work done in that area, but we built on that. 
Right now, we can take other communities into that community and the mayor hosts them at her house for dinner. Right. That's how the relationship is built over time. Yeah. Um, we had to lift our agreements with the communities to a level which met the uh, met the you know the London Soccer Change. We had to do a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. But really, it's engagement. It's telling the truth, making your commitments real. Don't tell them you're going to do something and don't do it. That is the worst thing. And that, so many people do that. They sign bits of paper thinking they can get away with it. It can't happen. Right. Be committed. And the community see that. Right. And tell me a little bit more about the kind of Philippines in the sense that, yep. you know, you're, you're a federal government and like in Canada, Australia, Canada, yeah, US, it's you've got federal and, and state or, or provincial in the case of Canada. How does it work in the oh. various islands of the Philippines? Yep. So really the federal government runs uh, all mining resources through right. a, a group called the MGB and uh, the MGB have regional offices. At a local level, you have IPO, Indigenous People, okay? And the Indigenous People have a separate regulatory body, which you have to work with on a local basis. Right. So you absolutely, before they'll give you mining licenses, you need Indigenous uh, uh, agreements with the Indigenous People organisations. Right. And they're then approved, and then you'll get your mining license. So, how does that work? Because imagine one's slightly more technical, regulatory, and the other is it comes back to that social license thing. It's like, what it are does. you going to do for us? Exactly. Right. So, tell me, tell me a little bit about the, how you navigate both of those. Well, it, not navigate. That sounds, I don't mean to sound rude or disparaging. No. It's it, it's it's something that you need to get, you need to get everyone on board. So, how, how do you manage that? Yeah. No. It, it's very. It, for me, it's a as as I said, it's about engagement. And the first thing we do when we sit with the community is we say, okay, what are your needs? What are you missing? Mm. Where do you want to go? You know, what do you, I'll give you 90% of the time. It's about kids and education. Okay. You know, some of them want infrastructure, but yeah. infrastructure for me is not a sustainable outcome for ESG or social license. It's something you build and then they, okay, I want more. Who, okay. What's sustainable? Sustainable is children. You grow children, you give them an education and guess who's happy? Uh, the wives. Guess who drives community? It's yeah. the wives. It's not us. And so you build social license around their needs. Okay. Cool. We do that by, okay, we take the community to see what we've done. They can see what good is. They can see what they want because a lot of them actually don't have an impression what they want. They don't yeah. really, because you're walking into communities that have nothing. Yeah. You know, they barely have running water. Yeah. So you, you, you're sitting there saying, okay, well, this is where we can take you. This is your future. Yeah. We're willing to agree to it. And if you agree to it, we'll work together on building the mine. Okay. And that's how you work with them. And that's, that takes time. So we've got a couple of years, and especially in the specific communities where we're going to start small-scale mining and we're going to look at the main ore body that we will uh, we'll develop first for the uh, repurpose of the plant. And we'll build that relationship with those communities. And we've already started um, we've already got rental houses in those communities. We've already started hiring locals out of those communities. Um, so yeah, okay. we're already moving forward. Let's look forward, if you don't mind. So yes. you've given us a sort of sense of where you've come from, and I'm gonna use the phrase turnaround because I we understand that. Yep. No clever management terminology here, just <laughs> turn around. Um, we turn the ship around. Um, and you've got a sense of you know where the, where the future answers are gonna, gonna Go come from it. and yep. how you transition, right? So that, that's all good. The, if I look at a company of your size, I mean, I'm surprised about your market cap, given really? the, the cash flow, but maybe people needed some proof points from you, which you, I think you certainly, if you pay off this debt in the next couple of months, you, you've made some uh, proof points of your own there. But in, in terms of the scalability of this thing, yeah. you know, replacing current answers is, is great, but it's not aggressive it's not ambitious so where's that ambition and, and yeah it's, it's, look at, yeah absolutely correct um what we do need to do is to replace current answers but that's not the end game mm -hmm. what we're really trying to do is look at that structured growth of first and foremost using the cash in our war chest huh. to without dilution because that's been a critical mandate by the shareholders mm -hmm. to drive the share price to a point where dilution is favorable yeah like now, we do have discussions on a regular basis with other companies about, because we are spending off so much cash, they, they need that cash, but is the share value right for us in that in a type of merger and a dilutionary state? Right now, it's probably not. 
in 12 months time, that might be very different. Yeah. Um, we will still be generating a lot of cash and there may be a way to fill that void of that year of um, delay on cash flow if we, we haven't got anything else running by buying into another company and using their cash flow to do that. So there's right. definitely opportunity. We just want to put ourselves on a more sure footing for the future before we do that. And right now we have four years. Okay, in a year's time, we have a resource which gives us 10 or 15 years. We have a very different picture in this company True. and that's what we're driving through. And we can do that with the money we have. So to go and talk about that secondary growth story before we put that in place, I think it's a bit premature. I'd mm -hmm. love to be able to do it, but right now until my shareholders see that their shares are valued where they want them to be, it's very difficult for me to go and start okay. that M&A. Okay, and I'm just going to finish with um, share register, share, share structure, because you, you talk about Nick Candy, obviously he's, he's made a, a bit of money in, in property amongst other things. Um, who else is in here in terms of whether it be institutional or, or yep. individuals? Uh, how much of it's retail? I mean, how's that, how's that break down? Yep, so we've basically got uh, two major shareholders, um, Nick Candy and Graham Edwards. And like I said, both of those gentlemen bailed this company out and we wouldn't exist without them. Um, uh, Graham holds uh, just under 19%, I believe. So together they hold around about the, what are we talking, 68%, uh, 67% of the company okay. in their shares. Um, and therefore, we're, we're looking at 30% you know, retail, call it that. Um, right, right. We've got some other, uh, um, Oberon, Rafa, uh, Baker Steel are all there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe they hold another 10% uh, yeah. between them, 10 to 11%. And they're not at this moment sellers either. So right. we don't have that small retail is very small. Because you're gonna to have to tell quite the story. So we get my banking hat on here. It's like, yeah. you have to tell quite the story to kind of retain existing shareholders by telling the second half of your story, which is the growth component, right? Correct. So why should they not be selling off? Because now you've kind of turned the boat around. It's like, oh, let's get our money on, off we go. Some good bits of normal. <laughs> A normal uh, response, I suspect, uh, given where you've come from, where the company's coming from. Um, are you, you, you're obviously picking up the phone, going seeing these guys saying, look, I think we're in control here. I think we've got uh, an opportunity ahead of us. Please stay, right? We do. you got that going on with the big boys. And then with the retail, it's not a lot of retail, right? And, you know, I think equities have been a tough market for the last two, three yeah. years for gold, really. Yeah. Um, the UK especially, it's been, it's been a real real tough gig. Is, do, you, do you kind of feel that the, the, the market is getting a sense of what you're about and will stick with you, give you a chance to breathe? I do. And I think we're seeing that. Right. You know, okay. We're seeing um, even, uh, it's over the last year, we've had uh, increased nearly double our share price. When I started, it was 0.5 of P, we're close on 3P now. Yeah. Um, we've seen the, the people who have followed us have seen the story. Really what we're doing now, while we're sitting with you, is to tell their story to others. Right. So we want the people who um, have followed us the whole time, who believe in us, to have others come in and see that story. And we haven't had our head above the world. you know we haven't raised our head we haven't been on the radar we now want to get on the radar because that future story is now important it now exists we now have the opportunity to do it three years ago with the debt we had we didn't know where we were going to end up yeah. um but with what we've been able to achieve we now can say hand on heart we have the confidence we have the management team and we have the drive to go forward to make something real out of this company not just a four-year asset that pays a dividend at the end and you know, right now that dividend be more worth more than the current share price, and that's why I know it's undervalued. Yeah, let's reinvest that. Let's reinvest that in a future that's ten to fifteen years. Let's reinvest that. So this isn't a two hundred million dollar company. This is a two billion dollar company. Let's go on that journey together, and let's find other people who are willing to make that journey with us. Okay, ambition is growth. <laughs> well is. done. Thank Appreciate you. Uh, coming in, Darren. Uh, nice to hear the story. No, not heard it before. Thank you. Um, Stay in touch. Let's know how you get on. Things are moving quite quickly, so uh, be keen to sort of stay, you know, follow up. That'd be great. Okay. I look forward to it. Yeah, it's been it's been fun.